Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Majid Johari. I'm the Member of Parliament for Richmond Hill. Today we are here to bring you updates and uh, make a number of announcements. I have here with me uh, uh, Parliamentary Secretary Omar Al Gabra, uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, as well as the person in charge of the file, the crash of uh, Flight 752. I also have here Mohammad Faki, the CEO of uh, um, uh, Food, uh, as well as the um, the person uh, sponsoring the uh, Canada Strong, as well as uh, Mayor Tory. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce uh, Parliamentary Secretary um, Omar Al Gabra. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Majid. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're here on the traditional uh, land of the Mississaugas of the Credit. Welcome to all of you. I want to thank uh, Paramount, Mr. Faki, for hosting us. Um, thank you all for being here. So, uh, what happened to flight PS 752 was nothing short of a national tragedy. To those who lost family members, friends, and loved ones, I want you to know that the entire country is mourning with you. And we will do everything we can to provide you with the support you need. I continue to meet directly with families during this very difficult time and hear their stories, listen to their concerns, and learn more about their loved ones. We want to make sure that their families receive the help they need to make it through this difficult time. Canadians have rallied together to support the victims and show their solidarity. Through the Canada Strong campaign, almost $600,000 have already been raised so far to support the families of the victims of flight PS752. Today, I would like to announce that the Government of Canada will match donations to this fund up to $1.5 million dollars. This fund will be used to support families of the victims as they navigate through the long-term impacts of those of these tragic losses. Over the coming days and weeks, Public Safety Canada will continue to work with the Canada Strong Campaign and its partners to refine this fund matching program and determine how these funds can best support families. Global Affairs Canada uh, consular team ha has continues to help the families of the victims, including through the immediate one-time financial assistance and other available government support, such as the crisis webpage and family portal. On the portal, families can get information regarding services provided by Pro Bono Ontario, the Canadian Bankers Association, and the Canadian Life and Health Insurance Association. They will find Ha uh, Health Canada's toll-free number for an in-Canada counselling and can also get information on travel facilitated by Air Canada and Qatar Airways for those wishing to travel from Canada to Iran or from Iran to Canada. The Government of Canada would like to thank all of its partners and all Canadians who have stepped up to provide services to the families of the victims during this time of tragedy. Your solidarity and support embody the very best of what it means to be a Canadian. We are there for each other at a time of need. And I want to thank everyone for doing so. We will continue to work hard to bring some comfort to those affected by this tragedy. Once again, thank you for being here. And I'm, uh, it's my pleasure now to uh, ask uh, Mr. Faki the uh, uh, CEO of Paramount Fine Food and the person who la launched Canada Strong to uh, say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for being here. I'm so happy to join Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Mr. Omar Al-Gabra, and the Federal Member of Parliament to Richmond Hill, Majid Johari, and definitely our Mayor, John Tory, for his continuous support to Canada Strong and all initiatives that are important to all Canadians. I want to thank the federal government to, for announcing this crucial support of the Canada Strong fundraising campaign. Thank you so much. The federal matching of funds that we are raising through Canada Strong is a significant boost to the financial assistance that we will be able to provide to these families of the Canadian victims of the flight PS752. 
We launched the Canada Strong campaign nine, nine days ago and with a target of a million and a half dollars. As of this morning, the campaign has raised exactly $571,100. So with the federal match, we are at $1,140,000. We have formed a steering committee for Canada Strong, and we are proud to announce that the former mayor of Toronto, Barbara Hall, along with Mrs. Manjeet Jita, from the partnership office at the City of Toronto, and a professor from the University of Alberta that will be announcing the name soon, will be the members of the steering committee that will decide disbursement framework for the funds that we are raising, along with coordination and collaboration with the government and the match. Once that framework is decided, over the few days coming, we will make a public announcement. We as well started a great communication with the families of the victims and the community centers across the country to gather list of victims and starting files for them. Over the last week, I've been working hard along with a lot of friends and partners in this campaign to call on corporation and individual to donate. So many have been so generous and for that, I thank them. A couple days ago, I attended a memorial in Thornhill and had the honor to listen to Habib Haju, a father telling a story about his daughter and granddaughter getting on that flight and calling him right before boarding that plane. All I can remember from that day is how he couldn't read that speech and how he was breaking up while telling that story. How he did not realize that that phone call was a goodbye phone call. One of the things that made me really cry and feel the pain is that one day that I will have to see that father and that grandfather again. And I really want to be able to tell him that we all Canadians did all what we can for him and his family. So I hope for us to be able to do that, let's all continue to donate, continue to raise some money, and with the match of the government, we could provide enough support for these families. I want to take this opportunity to thank the City of Toronto, Denton LLP, the Toronto Foundation and Canada Helps, MLSE, and a lot of the partners that help us to make this possible. Thank you very much again for the federal government for actually matching our funds and making this possible for those families. Thank you, and I'll leave it to, the, to Mayor John Tory. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mohammed, uh, thank you very much, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am very proud to see that after nine days when we first stood here that, in fact, uh, Canadians have responded uh, to the tune of almost $600,000 to help the families of those who lost loved ones when Flight 752 uh, was shot down. And I'm proud of that because this is not an Iranian-Canadian community problem. This is not a Eastern or Western Canadian problem. This is not a Toronto problem. This is a national tragedy. And it is a national tragedy when our custom um, the best reflection of our values we can find is that we respond as a country, all of us, to help uh, people who are struggling. And this is the first sign of uh, something uh, good that has happened in terms of that initial response in the very early days before we could even get effectively communicating. And I am especially delighted because I think it's going to help so much that the federal government, uh, at the urging of our two uh, members of parliament who are here today, and I'm sure with the full support of the prime minister and the ministers, uh, has come forward to do something that I think will give this campaign renewed momentum, namely to indicate that up to 1.5 million, the original target, they will match. Uh, thus producing the possibility we can produce even more uh, by way of support uh, for these families. Uh, I know the work uh, is continuing uh, to find justice and to find answers for these families who so richly deserve uh, to know more about what happened. But we have the opportunity in the meantime, while that work goes on, uh, to help people, uh, help, help families. I've been, as, as my colleagues here have been, including Mohammed, to a number of the vigils, and you only need to see the pictures, leave alone here, people speak about the tragedy that befell their families, newlyweds who went over to get married and never came back, parents, grandparents, children uh, who perish, sometimes children who are left here with no parents who are coming home. Uh, these are unbelievable stories of trauma that affected these people. And while I'm sure they've been comforted by the vigils, I'm sure that they appreciate the efforts made by the Prime Minister and the Government of Canada and the Global Affairs Minister to get answers and seek justice. Uh, there are things we can do uh, to make sure that some of the more practical uh, challenges they face as a result of this trauma can be met uh, through this kind of financial help and really just through the signal it sends. That if somebody sends $10 to this campaign, a Canadian, a fellow Canadian, 
sends ten dollars, then it's going to send a very positive measures of support uh, to these people when uh, the money is ultimately distributed. Uh, these are people who are our relatives, who are our friends, our co-workers, our fellow students, uh, and so on, who are in a moment of great need, emotional need, but also need uh, to address some of the practicalities of things they face in their lives that they didn't expect to face, that they should never have had to face, uh, and it is time uh, for us to help them. And so I want to thank the Prime Minister, I want to thank the Government of Canada, thank my two uh, friends here uh, who have been steadfast uh, supporters of all of these kinds of initiatives to be undertaken to uh, show the Canadian way of doing things. Uh, and I want to thank the uh, Global Affairs Minister, Francois-Philippe Champagne. I had a chance to meet with him last week, and I can just tell you, even since that meeting at the end of the week, he's been to London to meet the Iranian financial, at least foreign affairs minister, and other foreign affairs ministers to make Canada's case and to get uh, help for some of these uh, families. This is the right thing to do, to step up and help. It's the Canadian thing to do, to step up and help. These are fellow Canadians. They're not fellow Canadians with any descriptive adjective attached to them. They're just Canadians, the ones who were lost and the ones who are suffering from that loss today. And I think that uh, we are well on the way to showing them that we care about them. And I want to say thank you uh, to the Toronto Foundation, of course, because they stepped in. I want to say thank you to Denton's because they stepped in to help us structure all this and get it going in a hurry. I especially want to thank Mohammed because in a selfless way, as he always does, he is one of the most humane, compassionate people that I know uh, in Canada. And he stepped up. I've kind of been his backroom uh, operative in the sense that I've just been helping to uh, get him the odd phone number or make the odd call just to introduce uh, him to people that need to be uh, involved in this. And he has been doing the, uh, the, the, the vast majority of the work uh, aided and, and, and helped by some of his own uh, colleagues. So I just hope now we will join uh, the corporation and, and, and corporations and individual, individuals who have stepped up and, and make that number much bigger both the number of those participating and the number of dollars they raise. And there's been an incentive given here, which I know from all of my own fundraising experience in the past works well. When you issue something that's like a challenge grant to say we will match uh, every dollar uh, that is raised up to a certain number, it produces people who will say fine, because I know it's a two-for-one uh, deal. And I want to say thank you very much to the Government of Canada for this uh, and to say that uh, this is a tangible gesture of solidarity by the government. It is a tangible gesture of solidarity by those of us who've taken some role in getting it going, but now the most tangible gesture of solidarity can come uh, from Canadians uh, who can step up and make sure the campaign is a big success. Nous avons fait de grands progrès en quelques jours, uh, mais nous avons besoin de plus d'aide pour uh, ces familles, et j'espère que cette annonce uh, au go du gouvernement fédéral vous aidera. I really hope this announcement from the government will stimulate many more people uh, to contribute to something that I think is an incredibly worthwhile cause. And I think what we're now going to do is take questions on this, and then I gather some of you have a couple of questions for me about some transit-related matters and so on. I can take those after uh, we've dealt with anything you have to, uh, you want to know about, about this very important announcement today. So thank you very much, everyone, again, for being here, and we're happy to take some questions. In terms of a timeline, the matching donations, are they active from this point forward, or is it going to be retroactive to the start of the campaign, and is there a, a time when the matching the donation matching would come to an end? It's uh, retroactive since uh, from the beginning, and uh, we've set a deadline a month from now, so February 21st will be the deadline, or if we reach the maximum, which is $1.5 million. Yes, as you know, the Prime Minister, uh, uh, can't remember now, it was last week, on Friday, announced uh, uh, assistance or support package to families of uh, $25,000. Um, we know that, that, uh, that the expenses that families are facing are a lot more, especially some families more than others. The $25,000 are intended to help with immediate cost needs, like uh, funeral costs or travel costs. But uh, based on the conversations that I've had with many families, there have been significant losses that they're experiencing. Um, not only, obviously, a, lo a loss of a member of the family, but some families have lost their breadwinner, some families have lost significant access to a assets. So there are significant needs, uh, and that's why we're really grateful to be here in support of this amazing uh, campaign, uh, Canada Strong, to assist those families. Uh, as far as I know, uh, 
13 or 15, I can't remember, it's in, this, in the double digit, low double digit uh, families have applied, and I think five or six have received it so far. Yeah. $25,000 that's been promised. How does it work for families who might not have um, any relatives here in Canada that they all passed away on the plane, they're in Iran, are they still able to apply for that money? Yes. So every uh, uh, member, every family that qualifies a Canadian or a permanent resident, uh, we are in direct contact with their next of kin. And yes, you're right. There are some family members who are not here, and and, and especially if they're in Iran, it makes it even more complicated. Uh, so we are in discussions with those family members on how best to transfer that money to them. And a follow-up question. Um, I know you said I think yesterday that the remains of one. Uh, victim has been repatriated. Do you have any update in terms of any more that might have come back or might be in the process of coming back? So I know there's a second, um, either on its way or just uh, landed, and there are 13 more that are in the process of being repatriated. For a total of 15? For a total of 15. Uh, as I said, one have arrived, second about to arrive, or maybe just arrived, and 13 in the process. They're still in Iran, but they're in the process. Do you expect that number to to change? So the, the information that I got last, the number was 15, 16 families wanted to repatriate their loved ones. And as also, as far as I know, 61 have already been buried in Iran. 61 of, the, uh, of Canadians and permanent residents, according to the wishes of their families. In terms of the investigation into the crash itself, sir, are you satisfied with the way it's progressing? Does does Canada need to get its hands on those black box reporters? Uh, so we continue to press very hard at making sure that uh, the investigation is thorough and it's transparent. Um, our, um, the lead on this file is Transport uh, Canada, Transport Safety Board, um, and they are, as you may know, an independent uh, body from government. But as far as I know, there's so far ongoing cooperation. Uh, I know there's questions about where to download the block, black, uh, black, black box, uh, uh, but that discussion is ongoing. We've got assurances, again, from the president of Iran, from the uh, uh, foreign ministers of Iran to include us in, in this investigation. And uh, our, our investigators so far have been given access to the wreckage site, to see the wreckage themselves. Uh, so there's some progress, but we must remain vigilant and we must remain, uh, uh, we must continue to pay attention to how this process unfolds because we know that families deserve an open, transparent, and thorough investigation. So does Canada have its own uh, investigators on the ground in Iran? And the follow-up to that would be, how would you consider the cooperation from the Iranian government with regards to this? So yes, we do have investigators on the ground. Uh, they're uh, sent there by Transport Safety Board. Um, and uh, uh, as far as uh, the briefings that I've been given, but I would also encourage you to contact the directly uh, Transport Safety Board. As I said, they're an independent body from the government. But the briefings that I've been given is that so far, uh, uh, there's collaboration happening on site. I know that the investigators have been given access to the site, to the wreckage. Uh, so, so far, uh, uh, but we know that it's going to be a long, painful process, and we remain firm at achieving our objective. It's not only Canada that wants that objective, it's the four other grieving countries that want this objective. It's frankly the international community that wants to see that. Uh, um, um, I know Iran knows that. I know Iran knows that by admitting responsibility that they will uh, have to comply with international standards for those investigations, but we must remain vigilant. And my follow-up would be, is the Canadian government satisfied with the efforts being made by the Iranian government to do this investigation properly? As I stated, uh, we are seeing cooperation happening as we speak, I, but I also am uh, not naive uh, not to expect some um, uh, maybe speed bumps. So we are very vigilant and we remain firm in our expectation. On Sunday, the Iranian official heading up the, uh, their investigation into the plane crash said that they had no plans to turn over the back boxes, sort of backtracking on something that he had said on Saturday. Has that changed? Uh, I've read the report, but as far as I know, none of the official response or uh, 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 admission of the Iranians has changed. Uh, so um, I have not seen any signs of that being changed. But again, I want to... 
uh, remind ourselves and all of us, uh, all of you and all Canadians that we will remain vigilant, we will remain firm in our expectation. Uh, that's what families deserve, that's what Canadians expect, and we uh, will remain uh, um, uh, firm and pressing the Iranian authorities at getting um, and making sure that we get a transparent and a thorough investigation. So, um, I know initially when uh, Canada Strong was launched, and I will ask Mr. Fakih perhaps to also respond to this question, initially they had uh, uh, indicated that they're uh, looking to support the 57 families. Uh, we hope uh, in working with Canada Strong that we can find a way to also include the permanent residents because the $25,000 uh, assistance that the Canadian government has offered uh, was also to include permanent residents. So we are going to be in discussion with Canada Strong to make sure that we can make that happen. And yes, definitely, as Canada Strong, we're uh, considering definitely to include the permanent residents, but definitely we have to get into the discussion with the government and with all our partners. And will they include uh, also the, the people who, who are, don't have the residency? Those who don't have the nationality, the, the citizenship? I mean, all the distribution of the funds will be decided by, uh, like I said, we, we have put together a panel that will decide the way the distribution the framework is going to be, and we'll be announcing that publicly. And that panel will have a lot of great Canadians that have done this, and they have a lot of experience in that space before we announce, and definitely in collaboration and with the government to make sure that we all can come together and bring out a distribution panel that we all agree on. Thank you, everybody. They will depart for airplanes. Hello, I'm Martin Stringer, and you've been listening to Omar al Gabra, the mayor of Toronto. John Tory is now taking other questions not related to this announcement, but you, were, you heard Omar al Gabra, the parliamentary secretary to the prime minister, and others giving an update on the government's assistance to the families of those 57 Canadian citizens who died when Ukrainian International Airlines Flight 752 was shot down by the Iranians. And as you heard, the federal government is now announcing it will be supporting a private initiative. It'll be matching dollar for dollar the Canada Strong campaign. So up to a value of $1.5 million, it will be matching funds or contributions to that private fund, which will go to the victims of that shooting down. This announcement of federal government aid comes after last week's announcement that Ottawa will provide direct financial assistance of about $25,000 per person who perished in that tragedy to the families and relatives. Now, what we want to do is, as you see the clock ticking up to 1 o'clock Eastern time, we are going to be going to Washington. And we're going to take you to the live coverage of our colleagues at C-SPAN in Washington. And we're going to take part and we're going to allow you to watch now uninterrupted for the next many hours the second day of the impeachment trial of Donald Trump. And this is a day when the so-called House representatives or the House managers from the House of Representatives are going to present their case against President Donald Trump. So uh, as I say, this is expected to last a good eight or nine hours at least.